And we're back with part five, I think, of Kona. I was kind of stuck there for a little bit, but I think I figured it out finally. So, I'm going to jump right in. Got to give me a second to get my bearings here. Carl got the trembles as he imagined the excruciating pain that kind of scalpel could no doubt inflict. Within these miserable walls, patients probably felt more like in a slaughterhouse than in a doctor's office. Okay, there we go. No, wait, no, I'm trying to, trying to get my map out. Which one's the map? There we go. Left trigger. So I'm at the doctor's house. So what I need to do, I need to actually like go back this way, where it says like Bedard, Roy. Because there's some houses up there that I think I forgot to go in. I have really wrote a lot on this little thing, haven't I? Where is my snowmobile? Where the fuck do I run? Where did I park my snowmobile? Okay, I think it's over here. Right? this way. Ah, there you are. You dastardly bastard. Let's do the truck. Distracted driving is bad. Don't look at the map while you're trying to drive. Or your phones. So here we go. I've not been to these little places yet. Wait, where was the house? There was a house there, right? Yeah? I drove right past it. Oh. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Well, whatever. La chance. This is La Chance's house. Log. Good old log. The oh. air was freezing right down to the bone. Shit. The otherworldly ice had struck again. The woman's hopes and dreams were frozen in eternity. Under the stairs. Whoa. What the man here, grabbed buddy? his rifle. Carl felt a sense of dread in him. Bertrand Lachance, 1948. Perhaps their spousal relationship had been cooling down lately. It seemed like secrecy was commonplace in this house. Hmm, yeah. They got a lot of shit hidden, don't they? Hmm. 
Ooh, I got a diary. Vision's veil was lifted, and he was back to reality. A reality in which Giselle, Jill's loving spouse, was motionless, frozen in ice. Mother once told me when I first met Giles that I hadn't picked the brightest bulb of the lot. And as the years fly by, I'm seeing the truth of her words. Always trust your mother's wisdom. That blackmailing scheme is a prime example of Giles' brightness. He's like a small dog. He thinks he's bigger than he actually is. He growls, genuinely thinking he's scary, but everyone knows he can be pushed aside with just a little kick. He truly believes he can blackmail Hamilton, the big boss himself. It's going to be a long time in hell before my poor Giles can manage to pull off such a feat. After all, Hamilton's a rich, learned, and influential man. Not only is that blackmailing idea bad to begin with, but let's be honest, Giles is way out of his league. Giles doesn't even know how he's actually going to carry this out. I don't even think he ever would. He's just throwing around random threads out loud in the kitchen. He says he'll do it eventually, but I know better. Successful blackmailing requires masterful cunning, and Giles is a master of nothing. He is a slave and forever will be. I often look at that safe he keeps hidden in the fake wall, in which he stores all these incriminating documents he intends to use. I just can't come to grips with the sheer ridiculousness of the whole thing. Is it true that Ham Hamilton would still have to figure out the combination of the safe where everything is hidden? Only problem is Giles himself tends to forget the combination. He has a trick to help him remember. His father's first initial followed by three numbers I had to engrave behind his pendant. Who could possibly have a hard time remembering three simple numbers but my Giles? Giles has trouble sleeping. He will flail his arms and legs in his sleep. I told him this blackmail business would be hard on him. But that's the problem with idiots. They always think they're the smartest person around no matter how hard you try to shake them. Hamilton will find out and then we're done for. We'll have to move to Val d'Or and live with the small fry. I'm shaking as I'm writing this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I'm shaking as I'm writing this. I cannot believe I have taken part in this strategy. I haven't done anything. Why do I feel so guilty? Poor girl, she was so young. Okay, just two pages. Give me flashlight. Thank you. Stuff? Stuff to take? I don't want a toilet plunger. Looks like they were repairing the whole house. Repainting. Same difference. These unpacked boxes suggest they just moved here. No shit, Sherlock. Ooh, medicine. Thank you. Let me out. Thank you. That window had seemingly been left open for a while, Carl thought. Given the punishing weather, it couldn't have been intentional. I have yet to find a clock that works. Ah, moving. What a pleasant activity. Of course, You'll find the record player only to find the records weeks later in some random box. Founded by Bertrand Lachance. The general store, along with several more infrastructures in the area, had been acquired by wealthy industrialist William J. Hamilton. Perhaps the village should be rechristened Hamilton. He kind of summed it up. So, Bertrand Lachance, and then the pendant. Wait, wrong thing. Still with the wrong thing. Seven three nine. So B seven three nine. Carl had seen that kind of safe before, with its double-layered security system blending letters and numbers. Its code couldn't be broken by the common burglar. Give me stuff. I want stuff. William Hamilton is a crook. He's been blackmailing everyone in the village, myself included, like the infamous Seraphine Poudreur. In this document is proof of every bribe paid by Hamilton to the federal authorities in regard of the ex acquisition of his damn mine. The fact that he used his henchmen to instill terror within the, the village. 
will not sway the tribunals down in Montreal, but the fact that he has been bribing government officials surely will. I can already picture it making the front page. The English are all the same. We will prevail. Written with different ink. Hamilton is not only a crook but a murderer. I do not believe in his remorse. I firmly believe he will pay for his crime. I do not believe in native magic, but I do believe in their vengeance. Yeah. I don't think there's any other pages. It doesn't let me switch, so... What a mess! Clearly, there was some major revamping work underway here. Yep. The place looked barely habitable. A nice white coating would restore the room to its charm of olden days. Siggies! Carl Beautiful likes portrait cigarettes. of Gilles and Giselle, bound together by the chains of conventional love. A box full of Harlequin novels. A nice white coating would restore the room to its charm of olden days. Looks like they didn't like the look of this place. Many boxes scattered about. Carl didn't need to summon his detective training to quickly figure that the Lachances had just moved in. No, oh, give me back my door. Stop that. What's that? Polaroid films. Thank you. What's this over here? Anything good? Many boxes scattered about. No. Carl didn't need to summon his detective training to quickly figure that the Lachances had just moved in. The cross looked after a marriage's well-being and served as a motivator to uphold the priest's sermons calling for more little worshippers on one hand and cautioning against guilty pleasures on the other. Indeed, the Lachances were still part of the God-fearing generation. Well, I guess that's all there is to find there. Thing in the backyard? More weird ass shit. Off into the wilderness he goes. Yeah, he's gone. Carl was becoming increasingly convinced that this was not normal hunting. The game that was being tracked was fearsome. So much so that the hunter didn't dare approach it. What could it be? I guess I drove past all this shit in the beginning whenever, you know, you first started playing. I don't remember it, to be honest. Yeah, here we go. Roy's house. Or is it the Roy's? Roy's. The Roy's house. That's, that's the right way to say it. The Roy's. Roy's house. This is a cute little house, by the way. We fled. It was getting too dangerous. More people live in North Manistan. It will be safer there. Jean Roy. It was a classic Canadian house. Except for the absent horde of kids that would normally be swarming about. They need a log. Log, log, log. Where's the log? Gotta have a log. Start the fire. Need a log. I mean, these people ain't got no damn logs in their house. What's that? It's another house. Maybe they have logs. Oh, 
shiitake mushrooms. Um, which button do I hit? Time for a beat down, wolves. You come and get it. Gonna have a beat down. Come on. Whack! 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 Come and get it. Yeah, you like them apples, don't you? Come and get it, motherfucker. Come and get it. Carl never thought he would be dancing with the wolves. Where'd that little one go? He ran off, didn't he? Hey, I can go inside. It was so cold. Already Carl did not feel his toes anymore. Oh, more ammo. Sweet. I didn't even know you could find more ammo. Ammo. Hammer. Don't know what I'm going to use that hammer for yet. I'm looking for a damn log. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, I think I just realized I have logs in my truck. I feel really dumb. What's in the hole? Shit. Shit. Damn cord. I gotta have a magnet on a stick. Just one more move and White is checkmated. Game over. It seems the game was abandoned right before the final strike came down. Matthew had yet to add murder to his curriculum. He was fond of new experiences, especially the most thrilling ones, and taking the life of a flesh and blown individual who the night before was still able to think, dream, fantasize, calculate. Reed held the promise of exhilarating sensations. Unlike Raskolnikov, it wasn't about axing an old Jewish hag to pieces to test some lunatic theory. Not at all. Matthew just wanted to know how it felt. It seemed so simple. Horribly simple. He didn't have any particular victim in mind. Like most people, his desires ran quite wildly, so he only had a vague idea of them in mind. He pondered using a rival or a knife, assassinating a young girl or an old man. He tried to focus on practicality. His victim would have to be defenseless. Bodybuilding wasn't exactly Matthew's strong suit. He would have to act spontaneously, but not too much. He wasn't that eager to learn what spending the rest of his life in prison would be like. Some experiences carry just too high a cost to be worth it, really. This dude's got some problems. myself to the fridge if you don't mind catch up the photograph was snapped not too far from here Carl noticed the couple seemed to be very good friends her Jasmine cute it's got a kitty cat how come there's power in some areas and not others Konopoly. You win if you pass. Go. That's cute. Konopoly. Oh, it's a novel. Let, let's hope it's a novel and it's not real. It was around the time Matthew met Beatrice, of mediocre beauty at best. The girl with her distinctive features, cheeks covered with large pock-like freckles, a Jew nose, oily forehead, tired but vibrant eyes, shaded red hair, slender as a child body, chirpy laugh, you name it, it was the very image of innocence. That happened to be precisely the kind of victim Matthew was picturing in his mind. Though, one night as he was contemplating the ceiling from his bed, he swore to himself again and again, I'll kill her. His dreams were later filled with images of the imminent crime. He had come up with a simple enough plan. One fine evening, he would visit her place to become familiar with the area's intricacies and feel closer to the impending murder to slowly dig into Beatrice's thoughts, dreams, desires, and abilities. This way, he would be able to get a concrete sense of what his sinister deed would be stripping away from the very fabric of life, 
The whole thing would take two days, a week at most. Are we sure this is a story? This dude seems a little bit off his rocker. Mr. Fish, there's no Mr. Fish. Ooh, crock pot, give me food. Simone de Beauvoir, Claude Levi Strauss, Hannah Arendt, Roland Barthes. There's Carl the was surprised logs. by the literature filling this liberal leaning bookcase. Could there really be intellectuals dwelling in this far off land? <laughs> That's a dick thing to say. The first time he met Beatrice, however, she unexpectedly revealed her troubled origins to Matthew. She was adopted at the age of four, and recalling her former life still gave her a hard time. She played the piano in so graceful a manner that people often thought she may be the natural offspring of a musical virtuoso. She always cried before falling asleep, torn from the inside by a dreadful pain she couldn't explain. She confided to him so profoundly that Matthew couldn't get enough, coming back every night to learn every single thing of what would come out of that delicate mouth after pulling one last breath out of it. Every night he reflected on what the death of Beatrice would mean in terms of losses to humanity's common heritage, be it the sound of her sobbing or of her piano melodies, the compulsive tapping of her log and dick finger on her temple when she harbored dark thoughts, or any other little thing. It didn't matter. Everything would indiscriminately vanish. Everything. All these thoughts made for some blissful slumbers indeed. Then days became weeks and before he knew it, it was Matthew's turn to throw his secrets at her, his hopes, his cries of despair, as if throwing coins in a wishing well. She'll be dead by the end of the month, he promised himself. Is this that woman that they found dead? A murderer's diary. Carl's detective training compelled him to write some excerpts down. What sort of monster could give life to such a bizarre tale? The two lovebirds were still going at it seven months later, though, confiding fears and desires alike near the fireplace several days a week. The populace took notice and wounding words eventually found their way to Matthew's ear, prompting him to take action to prove his gentlemanship. He had to ask Beatrice Hand's marriage. He would have more than enough time to kill her later. Today when Matthew stares at this motionless ceiling, just like he did 20 years ago, he still wonders what he would be like removing from existence by slitting Beatrice's throat. What he would be depriving his children of, then as if soothed by his fantasy, he gently drifts off smiling the night away. What the fuck did I just read? Oh, hey, look, there's something in there this time. I gotta go make a magnet so I can get into that hole. I think I'm gonna have to go back to Bupo's, the doctor. Because I found a magnet, but I gotta make a magnet string thing again. Wait, no, 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 no. I got the tool. So it's not a one-use thing. I can reuse it multiple times. Cool. I need to check my health really quick while I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I couldn't hurt a... Couldn't hurt to have me a... Fucking, uh... Health kit. The wolf is gone. Talisman. What the hell is this? It's 
another talisman. Oh no, can I jump? Uh, which button is that on my Xbox controller? Okay, so I'm gonna see if there's another house. Hmm. That might have been it. I have to. Because those little spirits standing there at the waterfall are, uh. They're all the people who got frozen. Oh, so bad driving makes it go down. Hmm, okay. phantom gently faded away. Carl noticed that as the cursed villagers finally left reality, he could feel a sense of unburdening exuding from them in an almost intimate way. So I gotta find that guy. Okay. The further Carl moved away from the ice block, the more his senses came back to him. I don't know where he is. Maybe I need to go back to the Roy's house, because I didn't find one there. I didn't go in this shed. Can I go in here? A true Catholic always strives to keep lowly temptations at bay. Obviously, Carl thought, someone in this house wasn't doing a good job at upholding the Holy Bible's teachings. I think I can make that guy's caribou now. I walked past this house and didn't realize it. The house it. smelt like incense. The kind that reminds you of the good Lord. Of peace. Tapatoes. The Holy Bible. Religion was very influential throughout Quebec many years ago. Indeed, it was surprising that Carl did not come across a single chapel since arriving here. How did they draw the sun? Ha! 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 Oh my god, Carl. I like what he said over here. He said, there's no loose change in the cracks. That's hilarious. Damn, there's too much shit here to inspect. Good Paul Six, appearing papal. His crooked fingers gave the impression he was about to bestow a miracle.
Hey, thanks. Meat. The perfect cookie cutter Catholic family, most likely attending church every Sunday. Who knew that giraffes thrived in the North Pole? <laughs> the craze for toys was stupefying. Love of religion and ancestors was rooted deep inside the hearts of Canadians of old, to which the Bedards appeared to be closely related. The empty cradle sent an eerie feeling down Carl's spine, as if minutes ago someone just grabbed the baby and made a run for it. Sylvie's diary, August 14th, Jean The Bedards had vacated the premises. Carl gathered they would be of no help. Jean Luc never had a knack for mathematics. Try as he might, he'll never realize that, but he simply cannot be the father of the child I'm bearing. But how can I be sure? I have to keep this a secret, at least until the time is right, when it'll be safe. Dr. Beaupre told me I would start throwing up start showing soon, that I couldn't keep it hidden forever. Gotta muster courage, he said, with his usual condescending tone. Courage to face what's coming, but he doesn't get it at all. For him, I just had some childish affair. He doesn't realize I bought eternal damnation upon myself. Marie is very sick, and Jean-Luc plunges into despair. I told him nothing about the evil growing inside me. Sometimes I get the feeling he can see right through me. My Marie's suffering, and I'm on, am I the one to blame? Oh, Lord Almighty, why do children have to pay for their parents' sins? Marie has recovered, but there's something really gloomy about her now. She always seems so sad. Maybe she caught a glimpse of what dying is like. What if she's an unhappy child now because of me? Jean-Luc truly honored me two nights ago. If the baby makes it, maybe Dr. Beaupre could convince him it was born prematurely. It's my only way out. We're headed to Lake Laxante, Jeanne, tomorrow to visit Jean-Luc's mother. I need to. The situation is untenable now, and we fear the worst. The family's mother must have spent her days washing the filth off her kids' diapers. smiled at the sight of the nicely protected garden. Hopefully, the Bedards had managed to dig every last potato out before the sudden snowfall. Carl's mentality is really getting bad. I guess everything's just making him more and more uneasy as the time goes on. Well, um, I guess I'm gonna go make that guy's caribou. I know that, that there's a jacket and we can go into a, uh, an ice cave, so maybe there's somebody in there. Maybe we need the jacket to go into the ice cave. Why can't this fucker make his own damn caribou? Jean Bluin. Seems like that pig had a name after all. Oh. I just now realized that. Prepare caribou. What am I missing? Is it in my truck? 
I might have stowed it away in my truck. Yay! Make caribou for him! I want my damn jacket. Now I found an extra key. I wonder if it goes to that shed up here. Maybe he gives me the key. I don't know. Maybe I get him so drunk he's like, you can just have a key to my shed. You know. Cherche, on trouve. Parce que je t'aime bien, Aster, je vais te dire quelque chose. Tu fais bien de prendre ma pénis. Parce que par là-bas, tu vas rencontrer le vrai froid. Le froid qui glace comme tu n'en as jamais connu dans ta vie. <rire> Thanks, buddy. The fuck you looking at? Well, I would like to go to the ice cave. Now, the ice cave is somewhere in this general area. So, I'm gonna go get my snowmobile and go back to it. <laughs> I was right there next to it. Shit, 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 shit. Motherfucking. Fucking wolves. Can I go inside? Luckily, he had the coat to protect him from the biting. Cold. Yes. Now, hopefully, our last little spirit the cold person's in here. seemed to be more brutal here than anywhere else. It seeped into bones and into every breath to get to the heart until it stopped. Carl needed to be dressed in warm clothes to survive. Oh, Jesus. He just went down into the snow. Build a bridge. Well, I got the hammer. Yeah, go, I gotta go get the hammer. And a hammer. Found another hammer. Whoa, it is so dark back through here. Good job, Carl. Must be the last guy I need to get the icy wall done. Another instance of this magic ice. What was this one doing? Lying on the ground, so afraid. The is he homeless, maybe? Like water into ice. He 
crawled. He had been running in fear from something creeping towards him, against which he couldn't do anything, only to end up like this, petrified and cold. The Ice Wolf. That's what chased him. Yeah, shoot that motherfucker. Something come out of the cave. Regine. It seemed as though Regine had been ready to take up arms and slay people like Hamilton. Could he have committed murder for his cause? Who could have gotten killed in front of his very eyes? Old Rosaire had told me the mine administrators were having a sod and that the mines from before the war were neither collapsed nor inaccessible. Well, as usual, the old man was right. Those damn English people keep lying to us every damn day because we're just slaves to them. Water boys, white negroes, like Villiers said. We'll see who the slaves are by the end of the year. I'll set up the heart of my government in those mines. The resistance, watch out, fat cats, I'm putting bayonets in our cannons. The English tell us the region is full of resources. The resource they're forgetting about is our seniors. It's full of old people around here, and they got plenty of resources. Old man Rosaire, in exchange for a full load of bottles of caribou day, put us in contact with the best our country has to offer. Veterans, hunters, the salt of the earth, I'm telling you. These people have shotguns upon shotguns and blinds all over the territory. They agreed to lend me some, pretty much no questions asked. I still told them a big fat cat hunt was in the works. I also told them our aim was to make sure there was not a damn one of them left from here to the Utoa River. It's even better than I thought. The guns aren't old-timey relics from the Great War. They're modern, semi-automatic weapons in there too. And dynamite stolen from the mining sites after closing. All I need now is a militia to bear these arms and kick the English out of our lands. I'm wondering who the savages will back up. I have faith that they will help us, and not them taking back their land as a matter of principle for them. God damn it, Giles really has no balls. I was aware of that being before bringing him into my project, but it's so insulting to be emasculated like that. He told me in his wimpy voice that he has something to blackmail Big Hamilton with. What's the point of blackmailing him? Then we could just blow his head off? When we could just blow his head off. I would have been better off speaking to his wife, Giselle. Now she's something, that woman. She could hold her own with a shotgun. Besides, everyone knows she's the one who wears the pants in that couple. Lamoth has given up too, that coward. On the other hand, the Lamoths, they're not serious enough. They have a few screws loose. You can't start a revolution with Carl crazy people. Carl wondered how long he would have to endure this skin-stinging cold. Pierre, I knew you would have been on my side. You would have been lieutenant in my army. Rest in peace, eaten by wolves. Not an easy way to kick the bucket. Some people in the village are saying you brought this on yourself by poaching those wolves. And that in the end they were just brought to you justice in their own way. There will be a monument in your name in my new Quebec. I will have to be free of the Manistan region all by myself. Alexander Blay didn't appreciate it when I baited him by praising his brother. That guy has changed since Pierre was found. He's been miserable. I tried talking to him about it, but that big oaf only punched the mirror, and that made his hand bleed. I'll give freedom to my country without those tender-hearted folks. They'll thank me later. What happened last night was horrible. I've never seen someone die like that, right next to me. I feel so sick. So much blood. I'm wondering if the revolution really is for me, after all. So, I gotta get to a nice, cozy fire. I need a log. I don't have a log. Probably gonna have to, like, leave and go somewhere else. A log. But I'm gonna I'm gonna end it here, leave it there, and then in the next part we're gonna go um, see what's going on with that ice wall. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.